Welcome everyone. Today I am sitting down with Tracy Sagrati. Tracy is a movement guru who focuses on bridging the gap between mind and body. But the reason why I brought her on to today's conversation is really about the premise of what I've been talking about over the last couple of weeks, that ever since this COVID-19 and us all self-quarantining, our health is our wealth more now than ever. And with so much stress and uncertainty, this is the time to talk about what tools can we use now to downregulate those stress hormones, tap into your parasympathetic nervous system. But the reason why I brought Tracy in, not only is she a movement guru in yoga, but she specializes in trauma work when she was a critical care nurse. And she has been doing yoga for trauma for a couple decades now. Yeah, um, yeah, almost 20 so years. So she yeah. understands it. So Tracy, I would love for you to share, you know, let's get into the science of it. Let's share, yeah. you know, why we need to do this now. And it's not about, you know, just waiting till next week till we think it's over, but how this has to be a big yeah. picture solution. Yeah. So first of all, thanks so much for having this conversation with me, Catherine. I always love talking to you, but this is so essential for people right now. Um, so the first thing that I want to say actually is to everyone is just to start off by relaxing your resistance to what is. And by that, I mean, um, this is the situation that we're in right now. And so it requires us to respond appropriately. And, and that means we start taking care of ourselves in this moment. So you're listening to this conversation. It starts literally in this moment. The next thing that I want to say is uh, I just want to give people a bit of an overview of the sympathetic nervous system and just and, and basically what happens uh, when the sympathetic nervous system is engaged. And listen, guys, it's not all bad, right? So your sympathetic nervous system is just the part of your nervous system. And sometimes it's called the SNS. It's the part of your nervous system that allows you to get out of the out of bed in the morning. So it's the activating part of your nervous system. However, it's also the part of your nervous system, which is automatically, right? So it's called autonomic, but it just means automatic. It's automatically engaged um, when we feel or we, when we perceive threat in our environment. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's also called the fight, flight, freeze, or play dead response. And that's going to be really important in a few minutes. So essentially what happens is uh, it's triggered, right? When we perceive threat, whether real or imagined, and we perceive that threat and our pupils, first of all, our pupils dilate, right? And they dilate so that we can track everything in our environment and make sure that we're safe. And that also means we become hyper vigilant to our surroundings, right? So so now you're expending all of this extra energy kind of tracking your surroundings. Like imagine what it's like to go to the grocery store, right? Something that would have been automatic before is suddenly, uh, you're suddenly hypervigilant of what you're touching, who's around you, how close people are, et cetera. So your pupils have dilated. Your blood is shunted away from your digestive organs to your muscles, right? And it does that so that either you can run away or you can fight. Now, there's two things that happen because of that. One, your digestion goes to shit, right? It goes to shit. So it doesn't matter if you're eating phenomenally well. You could be eating amazing, but you're not able to digest, right? So you, you'll get gassy, you'll get bloated, um, constipation or diarrhea. You'll have irritable bowel-like symptoms and perhaps become intolerant to some foods, especially things like wine, chocolate, spicy stuff, etc. Um, so, so the blood is shunted away. And then on top of that, right, um, your, your, because all of the blood is shunted to your muscles, right, your muscles become tensed, right? And if this goes on for a long period of time, it's like your body is bracing for impact and that can cause pain, particularly around the face, the jaw, the neck and the shoulders. So that kind of becomes a chronic thing. And then at the same time, your, your whole uh, chemistry in your body changes because you're releasing, you're releasing certain um, neurochemicals and hormones in order to make you actually stronger, faster, and more resilient. Okay? Yep. Now, now here is, is the important COVID-19 piece, okay? Your sympathetic nervous system is awesome in a sprint, 
okay? Not so awesome in a marathon. And the situation that we're in with COVID-19, it's a marathon, mm -hmm. it's not a sprint, okay? And so what happens is all of those uh, neurochemical, biochemical changes that are happening in the body, they're good in the short term. In the short term, they help you function really well, right? That's why some people actually get a little bit addicted to, to having a bit of stress, right? Yeah, 100%. But when it becomes chronic, you no longer become effective. Your body actually starts to break down. It doesn't cope well. And so what we have to look at as uh, practitioners, because we are, we are practitioners of healing, right? Movement practitioners are practitioners of healing. Uh, whether you have a clinical degree or not, if you're doing this work, you're helping to heal society. Hmm. And so what we have to look at is if our nervous system is in this place where our sympathetic nervous system is engaged, we're afraid, right? We're perceiving the world as a threatening place. Then there has to be a way every single day to lower that level of threat by facilitating the, the more healing system in our body, which is parasympathetic. Otherwise we will break down. We won't cope well with it. hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the context of, if you've listened to this podcast before, when we talk about weight loss, right? From a fitness yeah. perspective, same thing happens, right? If people yeah. are not managing their day-to-day -day stress, they're yeah. taxing their system and their body's not able to release that, that body fat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Cause the cortisol actually. The cortisol, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And in, in times like this where it's driven up because of the stress for sure. And yeah. actually I am, uh, I spoke about this the other day about how breath work can help you before you're eating so that you can absorb the food in a way that is healthy and helpful. Right. Exactly. And I'm actually going to be interviewing Karen Gnat in yeah. a couple of days. Wonderful. And we're going to be speaking exactly about that also. Wonderful. She's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So I'm super excited. So yeah. I wanted to highlight about how, so I started doing some yoga online. I don't know yeah. if you saw, right? Yeah, I did. Of course. So yeah. The reason why I think that is the place to go is because of the cortisol. Yeah. Yes is movement, but I think yeah. tapping into yoga and specifically what you specialize in, yin yoga, which allows yeah. you to tap into that parasympathetic yeah. is very different, right? Because everyone's like, oh, I have time now. I'm going to go do some hits and some workouts, yeah. and da, 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 which is great. But in a type of situation that we are all in with this uncertainty, we are hyper vigilant, like you said, hyper yeah. uh, over processed, right? Yeah. Our and heart rate. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Our heart right. rate is up. Our respiratory rate is up. We're Everything. jacked. We're, We're jacked. jacked. Right. Yeah. We're like, like frog. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, the other piece is that Tracy is doing in the middle of a 21 day free yoga stair series. Yeah. And guys, like everyone should be doing this. You Thanks. are such a magician what you do, Tracy. Thank but you. Can you share a little bit about with people about why yin gives them access to really downgrading that response and yeah. really getting breath in the body? Yeah. Yeah. So it, I'm going to go into, you know, a little bit more science here. Mm. Uh, basically, so, so yin, just for people who haven't done it before, it's, um, it's a slow contemplative practice. And it's also a highly provocative practice. And by provocative, I mean, it can, it can push your buttons a little bit, you know, yes, the, right? <laughs> right. Yes, you know, Catherine, you know. <laughs> you know, the whole reason that I practice in yoga and that I teach in yoga is because my personality is like, I'm a super producer, you know, I'm like mm -hmm. you, right? Like I like to move and shift and, and so it is actually what I need to calm my nervous system down. So that's the whole reason I went into it. I didn't go into it because I'm innately like that. I went into this field because I needed it. Right. So, so I understand it intimately and I understand the provocative nature of the practice and how, you know, it can kind of make your head want to blow off sometimes and, and yep. it's all good. So the, the kind of practice it is, is that you go into postures and there isn't a formal, uh, there aren't formal rules around the way that your body goes into the postures. It's more about you learning to be with yourself in the present moment through intensity. Mm -hmm. And what that looks like speaking is that you come into a posture and you stay there for a period of time. And, and you know, it's, it's anywhere on the short end, if it's a really intense pose, it might be one minute, but on the longer end, it could be five minutes you know? Yep. <laughs> and, um, and so what happens is over the time, over that period of time, 
all of the all of the receptors in your body kind of acclimate to the stretch right and so so you start to produce endorphins just because of that stretch acclimation and endorphins are just endogenous morphine right so that makes you feel really good, right? Yep. And then the, the second piece to it is most of the postures are practiced on the floor and you're kind of in a flexed position. And there's something, um, there's these kinds of receptors uh, in your blood vessels and they're called baroreceptors. And what, what happens is when they're, so when you're, when you're in these flex positions, they're stimulated. And what they do is they actually lower your heart rate and they lower your respiratory rate. Like you don't really have a choice. Okay. And so by going into these postures and slowing down, your nervous system just automatically is told by your physical body right? That everything is okay. So it, you don't even have to say in your mind, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, which is also helpful, right? But because your body is cueing that, because these baroreceptors are, are stimulated, your mind follows, right? And it's often more difficult. Like if your body is jacked, it's really hard for your mind to slow down. But if you start with the body, as you know, Catherine, this is like a favorite topic between you and I, just talking about the wisdom of the body, right? 100%, yes. If you start with the body, then everything else follows. Mm -hmm. so, so it's really profound. And then the, the second layer on top of that is when we do these practices, we whether it's cute or not, even if the breath isn't cute, okay, when you're doing these slow practices, because they're, they're a little bit edgy, right? So you kind of have to anchor yourself to something. Yeah. And typically that anchor is the breath, right? And as you anchor to the breath, the breath innately slows. Now, often when I'm teaching, I'll even cue the breath, but say you don't, you, you know, you, you will naturally breathe more slowly. And if you can get your breath really slow so that you're breathing only say four or five times in one minute. So that's an inhale and an exhale is one breath. Yeah. Then what happens is you start to facilitate the parasympathetic nervous system. Mm. And that's also known as our rest and digest response. Mm. So our inflammation goes down. Um, we start to digest our food really well. Our stomach irritation goes away our sleep improves. So things like insomnia, you know, trouble falling asleep or even staying asleep, these things start to resolve themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and interestingly, you know, I've, I've been teaching this practice for a long time and training teachers to offer it. Interestingly with this practice, it happens really fast, you know, like that, that's, that's a thing like in 10 minutes. Um, I so it. I think it's pivotal. I think it's pivotal. I love it. And so for all of you guys listening, if you listened last week, I interviewed Michelle Jacobs, who specializes in EFT yeah. technique. And yeah. so this is another tool, guys, to put in your toolbox and use starting today, right? You yeah. can follow Tracy on Instagram every single day. She's posting a new challenge that you can do first thing in the morning, yeah. ease and set your intention for the day, change yeah. your state, set yeah. your intention in that elevated state, right? Yeah. And then exactly. end the day with it right? Because yeah. they're short, completely doable, yeah. which is around. So yeah. Tracy, thank you for doing that challenge. Yeah. And coming up soon, and we'll let you know, Tracy is going to be doing these live for members only. Right? Yeah. So yes. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> so we'll let you know when that, that is live so that you can get a little bit more of Tracy and her wisdom. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about a little bit, if we can, uh, about the trauma piece, because you have worked so much in trauma. And I yeah. think regardless of even though you're positive and we know that we're going to get through this and as a humanity we'll get through this this yeah. is really traumatic for people losing jobs not knowing so much uncertainty yeah. so i guess loop back i guess a little bit of the science a little bit of the yoga and what you would coach your clients through in this traumatic occurrence yeah yeah so I want to just step back for a second and just talk to people about what trauma is. Cause I feel, I feel like, uh, thank God, um, you know, in society now people are more aware of trauma. Um, but, but let's just kind of throw out like a, a general definition and, and, you know, how I talk to people about it is, is trauma is anything that overwhelms your ability to cope. 
Okay. And so at any given time, it's important to understand that we operate within a specific window of tolerance, right? And if you think of a window, I'll just hold my hands up so you can see it can expand when we're really healthy and it can contract when we're not as healthy. And so the things that are going to allow us to process anything that happens in our day are going to depend on also our ability to process trauma. Okay. So anything that is outside of our ability to cope is then going to kind of traumatize the system. So what does that mean? Uh, generally speaking, what it means is what the, the body is so intelligent. So intelligent. Yeah. Okay? So it's so intelligent and it recognizes, okay, something's happening. Shit's going down. And I don't have the ability to cope with this right now. And so it kind of breaks up the stuff that we can't deal with and it's lodged in our body. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what happens say after the traumatic event has resolved, we, we might get through it and think, Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And then after stuff will start happening to us and it might happen where that hypervigilant continues or it might happen where we get these flashes in our minds where we're envisioning bad things happening right having these flashbacks and it might not even it might not even be flashbacks of this time but it might be these flashes where because we're on high alert we perceive the world as threatening all the time okay. and so this is this is kind of how it can play out right mm -hmm. And so one of the most important things, and this is what I am coaching my clients through right now, and I started our talk today with this, is to relax your resistance to the present moment. And what I mean by that is, uh, this is real, this is real. <clears throat> and so in order to process it, you don't have to process it all at once, okay? So it's not about that, but it is really important to to try to kind of come into each moment and start with two things, awareness and acceptance. Okay. So awareness and acceptance. So you start with awareness and acceptance and go, okay, you just become aware of, okay, how does my body feel right now? Right. And you just do a quick body scan. You don't need to have a formal practice. You don't need to have a formal meditation practice. That's not necessary. Just do a quick body scan and become aware of, what you're holding, you know, are you breathing in your chest? Mm -hmm. What's happening in your mouth and your jaw and your shoulders? So you go through that and you just bring your awareness in. And then the next step, and this is the, the tricky part, but it's really, it really will help in not allowing this to kind of become like a post-traumatic thing. Mm -hmm. So you are experiencing trauma, but there, there's a difference between experiencing the trauma and then post-traumatic stress, right? So they're two different things. So the next thing to do is to welcome, right? And, and <laughs> that's like, that's a tall order. That's right. a tall order. So what I mean by that is to welcome in your experience, right? And, and to recognize that it's, uh, it's dynamic, right? It's dynamic. Over the course of a single moment, you're going to go through lots of different emotions. But if you resist them, right? And if you try to avoid them or bury them, what happens is then they get lodged in the body. And then it becomes that unprocessed trauma that we just spoke about, right? And it shows up later as post-traumatic, okay? Yes. Whereas if we can be aware and awake, Okay. And, and actually welcome the feelings as they dynamically pass through us, then what we'll notice collectively is that we'll start to see that the feelings come and go. Okay. And then the next piece that I want to say, I know I'm saying a lot right now, <laughs> um, but the next piece that I want to say is in that welcoming, um, the, it's really important to uh, be able to take the seat of the witness. And what that means, um, practically speaking, is that you're looking at your thoughts, not from your thoughts. Right. So you're stepping back as the observer. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, every time you have a thought, you'll have an emotional reaction. 
and we collectively see the world according to our history and according to as we are right now, right? And so if you're looking from the thoughts and not in as, a, as an observer, you're, you're going to think everything that you're thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling is true. Yeah. And it's not necessarily, it doesn't mean it's not real. Correct. It's happening to you. But it's your perception that you can shift. You sit back and step back outside of that. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So it's about shifting your perception. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you can only do that by being in the witness. And then, and then this is where we have to kind of then loop back into the breath, right? And relaxing the nervous system. It's very hard to come into the place of being in a witness state and welcoming if we don't first calm down our nervous system, yeah. right? So what I am suggesting to people is that that's why I'm posting a daily practice, right? I'm posting it every single day because it, it, these things are dose dependent. Yeah. Okay? If, if I was looking at pharmaceuticals, right. And I have no issue with pharmaceuticals, but if I was looking at um, giving somebody a drug, yeah. right. The way pharmaceuticals work is that you need a minimally effective dose to get the best response with the lowest side effects. 100%. Okay? This is no different. This is no different. It's no different. And so we need to daily pacify the nervous system. Okay. And then daily come into awareness and acceptance of the present moment. Welcome in what's happening, allow ourselves to feel those things so that they're passing through and then see if we can go. Uh, it's almost like a, a process of toggling yes. back and forth between being in it and then watching it and then being in it and watching it. But this is what allows us to process it. Yeah. And, you know, if I can add, you know, one of the things that I'm also posting on this daily challenge is something called, um, I'm doing two things, a uh, yoga nidra practice and, um, and a body scan practice, which are also free. You can find them on Insight Timer uh, with me. And those practices specifically, what they let you do is to do that, that toggle back and forth between being in it and then watching it and then being in it and watching it. And that also decreases the intensity, which allows you to process what's happening, build your resilience, expand your window of tolerance so that none of it is getting launched in your body. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I think we, we spoke about this offline, but like I've been saying on my Instagram stories the last week, what you do today will make a difference tomorrow, next week, yes. next month, three months from now. Yes. And I spoke about this on the last podcast. It's about those rituals that we can put in place every single day. They don't every have to be so wide, but they yeah. do, they are, they have to be intentional. They have to be consistent. Yeah. This right now, our lives depend on it and our body's ability to have a strong immune system. Yeah. On it, right. Yeah, and absolutely. At home with your kids. Your yeah. kids energetically need you to be resilient also. So this is not just about you. It's about how can you be your best version now in yeah. the uncertainty that yeah. can then collectively share it to your family and then collectively to our community and then globally, right? Exactly. Exactly. No, no, this is, it, it's so key. I love what you're saying because basically what you're, what you're talking about, Catherine, is that you are the foundation. Yes. You are the foundation, right? And, and you are, especially being at home, because, you know, we're both moms, we've, we know so many, so many of my clients are home with their kids, same with you. And um, we, we actually are the, the foundation of the emotional climate of the home, mm -hmm. right? So think about that for a second, like that, the way I even phrased it, the emotional climate, we are the foundation of the emotional climate, and everything hinges on that. And the only way for the, for, for our kids who, who aren't, they're, they're not developmentally mature, right? Their executive functioning isn't mature. Mine, my, my kids certainly aren't, they're little. And so they are depending on us for that. And even to go back to the brain, okay, to go back to the nervous system piece and trauma. And this is really, really interesting. I think anyway, hopefully you guys do too. Uh, but you know, our executive functioning, our ability to kind of think logically and rationally and 
uh, positively affirm things in our minds it comes from our frontal lobe and the yes. prefrontal cortex. And, and then our, our threat uh, assessment happens more uh, in the amygdala, which is part of the limbic system. And there's a bunch of other important structures there too. Uh, but the interesting thing with the amygdala is that it, um, you know, it gets bigger function, like structurally. So structurally, as if we've been through trauma already, it grows in size. And so anytime we go through something that's challenging, because it's just structurally bigger, it, it actually perceives things as even more threatening. Okay. Now, so that's interesting in and of itself, right? It's like, holy macaroni pony. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. But then, but then what is also kind of funky is that when the amygdala is firing, it shuts off the relationship between the amygdala and our executive control. So that part of the brain that could soothe ourselves and, and, and like where you could self-talk and calm yourself down, it, it's like poof, the connection's broken, right? And so these practices become the way in. They become the the tool through which to facilitate that reconnection once it's been broken down, and um, so yeah, so it's essential for us in the in the foundation of our homes with our families with our children. Um, it's essential for our immune systems, absolutely for our and you know, if we can't facilitate our digestion, then our immune system is going to be screwed. So it it just it all impacts each other, and then and then again out to our communities yeah. as well. Um, yeah, I forgot what the next point I was going to say. I had a million things going through my head there. So I want to honor your time, but before I do let you go, so this is Tracy's technically third time on the podcast because we yeah. did an interview about yeah. her amazing retreat that she facilitated in Costa Rica, Evolve Retreat. Yes. And by chance, which is so interesting, when I sat down to do this podcast today, right beside me, Right was the handbook, the amazing, beautiful manual that Tracy spent Aww. a lot of time to create. And a couple things about that. So it's on day seven. So it is the Yoga Sutra of the Daily Wisdom speaks this. And so it actually ties this in perfectly. Yeah. The antidote to destructive driving forces is to cultivate the opposite, constructive driving forces. Yeah. Right? And in fact, if you look at the date, it is Friday, <laughs> February 14th. Wow. Right? So Valentine's Day. So yeah. what a better moment to talk about love and yeah. spreading this, right? Yeah. And it says here just below that, what we repeatedly do, excellence then, is not an act, but a habit. So yeah. I wanted to bring this up to tie this all together because I wanted to invite everybody listening to take that on as a habit, right? That it's about the choice we can make every single day, these baby steps of saying, I can do this now. I can yeah. do a yin practice with Tracy today yeah. and tomorrow, yeah. and just a little bit, right? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, you know, this time I think, I think if we could all just step back and go, okay, this is an opportunity. It is an opportunity. It is so hard for us to change our habits with all of the regular competing interests on our time. And I, I talked about this when we were away on retreat together, yes. remember? And, and so now, as much as this is a shock to our systems, it is another, it, it, there's a golden opportunity here. And mm -hmm. the fact is we are, we we're wide open to create new habits. The key is that we just have to sit down and be conscious about doing it, yes. right? And I think, you know, part of what I've been doing myself is really uh, consciously deciding what I'm going to consume in terms of the, the people around me, right? So I'm following you. I'm following like movement people. I'm following, I'm following spiritual leaders. I'm following people who are doing work in the world that is going to lift me up. Nothing toxic. Yes, Nothing toxic. Very important, right? Nothing toxic. And, and so sit down and actually make a plan for yourself. Right. And it's, it's just a lot of little things that you're doing over the course of the day. And those habits are going to transform you. It, here's your opportunity. It's everybody. If I look at what my clients have complained about for 20 years, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have the time to this. You know what? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Just seize the moment and you know, when you, and I'm sure you talk about this, Catherine is, is, um, 
like w- when people are going to do something new, like, especially if it's a movement thing or even especially meditation too, it's like, you can talk yourself out of it in like the first five to 10 seconds. Right. 100%, yep. So you just, you just like, as soon as like, if you've written it down that at like 9 AM, you're going to, you know, book a session with Catherine or something, right. You just don't even think about it. You just, you just do it. <sighs> Get right? into action. Always. Yeah, because you can't, like, I know this with my clients and with myself too, is you, you, if you give yourself that five to 10 seconds, you will talk yourself out of it. And so the key is you just make a plan and you act. Yeah. And that will, that will really shift and transform everything. Yeah. Can I say one more thing about the, the neurochemicals too? Because I think that this is pretty important. Um, it's important for people to also know that when it comes to epinephrine in the U.S., um, a lot of times it's uh, called adrenaline um, or cortisol. Uh, it, you know, while yin practices and breathing practices and yoga nidra are all very important, um, if your nervous system is jacked and you're really high anxiety, uh, if it's been going on for a period of time, the best way to actually metabolize those neurochemicals is uh, through uh, some kind of aerobic activity, right? So if Catherine's doing some hip movement, right, that will actually metabolize those neurochemicals pretty fast. So if, if you can't, if you try to do a yin practice or you try to do a breathing practice or a meditation and you're just like, I can't sit still, you're feeling panicked or overwhelmed. My advice to you is to first move because that will chemically process all of that stuff in your body. And then you will be able to do the pacifying practices just as a, you know, as a closing, because sometimes people can't be still first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So definitely follow Tracy, add this in your morning ritual um, because it is so imperative now. And you know what? If you build the habit now, you'll be so thankful when this is all over yeah. to have that new tool in your toolbox to be yeah. more resilient than ever. Tracy, I'm so grateful for your time as always. Thank you so well, much. Okay. Healthy, my friend, we will yes. see you soon. You too. Bye.